Thank you for joining us tonight. My name is Barry Erickson and I am Community Engagement Coordinator at Wheaton Public Library. Tonight, we are delighted to bring you Declutter to De-Stress. Whether you have lived in your home for two years or 50, decluttering and organizing can be daunting. Tonight, we will get motivated to tackle the project areas that are causing stress in our lives. We will learn how to reduce the clutter, what to recycle, and where to donate items in order to regain the joy in our spaces. Tammy Billick is the owner and certified senior move manager of Honoring Aging, moving life's treasures together. Honoring Aging is a move management company based out of St. Charles, which has been in business for 16 years. The Honoring Aging team has helped thousands of people throughout Chicagoland right size and declutter their stuff. And we all know we have a lot of stuff. So with so much expertise and important information to provide tonight, Tammy, thank you for being with us. And I will turn the mic over to you. Yeah, thanks for being here. I'm Tammy from Honoring Aging. Um, I, I always get the privilege of saying that I work for Honoring Aging and now I, I own Honoring Aging. Um, but it's really the clients that we get to serve that makes me excited to go to work every day and talk really about your stuff. Um, I have a passion for a lot of stuff in the world. Um, I see a lot of stuff. And so I know that there's always like, where do I start and what do I do? And, and it's so, so stressful and, and I don't know what to do. So we've come up with um, this presentation and I'll go through it today. I absolutely love questions. So I really want you to ask questions at the end, um, put those in the um, Q and A and we'll go through those at the end. So I'm super excited for that part of a presentation as well. So we're gonna dive right into this. We're gonna talk about how is your clutter stressing you? and I have to always say this in the beginning, because even though we talk about you know, clutter and, and it stresses each one of us in a different way, um, I actually have clutter. So don't think that I'm this perfect homeowner and, and I don't have a lot of stuff. So, but um, we just like to talk about it. And I always like to give pointers where I can. So we're just gonna talk about really quickly. I feel like this is kind of like the boring part of yes, I have stress, stress around my clutter, um, but here's just some bullet points that I um, like to talk about really quickly. Um, it causes you to overwork your senses. So for example, like your to be visual, right? So your eyesight, it's constantly just looking at different things all the time. There's just so much. And then you overly overstimuli those different senses that you have. So that could be um, causing you some stress. And your clutter is a distraction. So instead of doing things that bring you joy, it's like constantly, like, I should be doing that and I should be doing this and I need to go through that. So taking care of some of your um, clutter will help it less to be less distractions. Um, it's hard to relax both mentally and physically when you're constantly seeing it all around you. So we want to help you um, get through some of that. Our work is never done. Our brain is telling us all of the time, like you should get off the couch and take care of those things. You should go through that pile of stuff, you know, that's been on your desk for a few weeks. Um, so again, causing stress and we're, we're gonna try to help you with that stress um, by the end of this presentation today. It also causes anxiety. Um, I'm more than willing to admit to that as well. It's like when I can't find something, um, it causes me, you know, a, a higher anxiety level. Or it says like, I'm gonna put that off to the side because I know it's gonna take me a really long time. Well, then that causes again, more anxiety. It's embarrassing. Clutter can be embarrassing. Um, whether you have a path in your house to a certain area or just a few extra piles, you know, when someone pops on over or um, you wanna have people come over, it can be embarrassing because you have to take care of things before um, they, it, you know, if it's planned to have them come over. It definitely hinders my productivity when my desk gets messy or my kitchen island is messy. Um, I will tell you that firsthand, I can absolutely relate to that as well. It's frustrating when my piles get a little too big or I can't find something specific that I wanna wear because I haven't taken care of things and get frustrated with myself. So that can be um, definitely causes stress in our lives around clutter. So what are some solutions? So we're gonna talk about these and along with some others um, throughout the slide presentation. So recruit others to help you with like your clutter and your chaos around you. So I actually did this a, about a month ago with my daughter, she's 12. 
Um, and I said, I kept prepping her saying, hey, we're going to go through your toys. We need to go through these things. You're not playing with them anymore. And so I said, we're going to have a fun time doing it. She's like, mom, how is that going to be fun? I said, well, I'm going to video record you and like little snippets of you going through the process. And then I'm going to post it on our Facebook page. So yes, she's only 12, but she had fun because I made it fun for her. And of course, some snacks along the way, um, maybe chocolate involved um, and some music as well. But you can look at that video on our Facebook page. But and if you have a friend that says, hey, I, I'll be happy to help you go through stuff. Um, if they see that it's a stressor in your life, please take them up on it. It is you have a lot more um, success in the end if you have a person that has like no connection to you or your stuff. Um, daily and weekly items that you use should be permanently have a home. So put those away once we use them. Um, that is definitely easier said than done. I will admit to that as well. And we talk about three piles often. So is it keep when you're going through things? Is it donate? Is it recycle slash trash? So we focus a lot on three piles when we help um, people sort. Everything has a place and a place for everything. My mother-in-law says this often to me as she comes over and she's like, well, if you would just put it away after you use it because it has a place. So I chuckle and agree with her. Um, and maybe you've heard of the Ohio method as a solution. So the Ohio method, which we're gonna talk about again in a, in a couple of slides means only handle it once. So meaning if you're going through things and sorting and, and deciding on what goes where and, and things like that, it means you touch it, you make a decision about it. And then that becomes its new home or I, there's no like, I'll come back to that later pile. So we don't, we don't have those piles in our industry um, and, and you won't either. So, and that will help you to see the, the light at the end of the tunnel. So Ohio is a great method. Um, and before leaving a space daily, hourly, weekly, tidy it up before you leave it. So then when you come back to it, if that space will bring you joy and put some music on when you're decluttering. It uh, definitely helps the, the, the situation um, that you're going through because it, I know it can be daunting. So some of the areas that we're gonna talk about today um, because I talk about these areas because I feel like everyone can relate to them. So your closets, we're going to talk about electronic recycling, your junk drawers, everybody has at least one by the way, uh, kitchen, paperwork, bathroom cabinets. And so these are some of the questions that I ask, not that you have to definitely pipe up an answer, but start to think about them. What does right sizing your home look like? Um, it doesn't mean that this weekend, every area of your home is going to be right-sized. It means that you're going to take on little pieces of the puzzle and get those areas decluttered and downsized or right-sizing as we call it in our life, in our industry. And today we're going to also talk about what, what can you reduce and reuse and recycle. So we're just going to talk a little bit more about that a little bit later. And how do I, how many of those items do I already have? When you gather things together like vases or, um, you know, screwdrivers, it's like, oh my goodness, I have so many of those I didn't even realize because they're scattered throughout your home. Have I used or wore this item in the last year? It's the million dollar question. Uh, we all have full closets. Um, and do you have specific plans to use that item? And where do I start? So we're actually going to start in a couple of different areas. So your, it could be simple, right? So when I give this presentation, by the way, you didn't know this, but you're going to have homework in the end. Um, so I encourage you to take on something. It might not be tomorrow or working, um, but it could be definitely this weekend. It can be a simple, I'm going to take care of my bookcase this weekend. You might have a bookcase that looks like that, or you might have too many books, um, or it could be a simple linen closet. So I when I do, when I talk about this, I try to break it down in little sections for you so you don't feel that, oh my gosh, I heard this presentation and she wants me to take on the whole basement this weekend. Well, that's not possible. My husband said the same thing to me 14 years ago when we moved, we're going to take on the basement this weekend. I said, no, I'm not signing up for that, but thank you. Um, but so that's why we break it down. So our first area we're going to talk about is closets. Everyone that I have came in contact with over the last 16 years has at least one full closet. And they say to themselves, like, I walk in there and I get so stressed and I don't know where to start. 
So think of it as, again, pieces of the puzzle. The items that are on the shelves are a piece of the puzzle. The items in the dresser on the hangers are all pieces of your puzzle that you're trying to make some decisions about. So this is actually my closet. I took some before and after pictures of this trick that I have found. Um, I, I got this information about seven or eight years ago. I heard it from someone. I was like, oh, this is wonderful. So it's the rotation of the hanger, you know, kind of scenario. Um, so in the top, you'll see this is my closet. I did this last April. Um, and my closet is in two sections. The right side is spring and summer items. The left side is winter um, and fall items. So in April, which is coming up pretty quickly, um, I will be doing this again. Um, I do it every April and October. So in April, since we're almost there, or we are there, um, is that what we do is take all of our spring and summer hangers and turn them backwards on the rod, okay? And then when you wear that item through spring and summer, you put it back the dire right direction on the rod. So then in October, you can see all of the items that you didn't wear during that season. And for me, I'm a visual person, so that was really important to me. So the first time I did this about eight years ago, I had seven bags of clothing that I got through in a year, two seasons, um, that I didn't wear and I made decisions about it. And so this is a really great tool. I encourage you to use this tool as April is now upon us. Um, and just in last April, I was still able to get rid of 19 items of clothing. Um, there is some shoes in there as well. Um, but the hangers is really a great tool. It's visual. I love to do it. A lot of our clients use that. The other area that we talk about is kitchens. So kitchens are one of those areas of our home. They just hold a lot of stuff. Um, so we talk about spices because, first of all, everyone can relate to it. Um, I was even in a home today that we um, moved this particular client and she's downsizing again um, seven years ago. And she still had the spices that I put into the cabinet seven years ago. So I went through those quick expiration dates, made some decisions for her um, with those. But we do find old spices pretty regularly in our business because it's one of those things that you use normally what's in the front of your spice cabinet. And what happens is they all get pushed to the back and you're like, how did that get expired? You know, but if it's not visual in the front, then sometimes we forget about it and it, get, it gets expired. And this can be done pretty quickly. Um, so spice cabinet might take you an hour, maybe, maybe only a half hour. So this is a quick, easy, got that done. I can do another thing when I come back from my walk or something this afternoon. So check on your spices and see how old they are. And we talk about Tupperware, to lots of Tupperware, right? Period. How much do you have is I, my question on there. Um, so do the lids match up? Tupperware, again, also a pretty easy area of your kitchen to take on as your homework. Um, pull it all out. Yes, I said pull it all out. Put it all over the counter or the floor, wherever you decide to do it or have a card table and start matching up the lids. Um, and then once they're matched, you can make decisions on what do I use regularly? What can I donate and what needs to be recycled? Because um, Tupperware, you can recycle most of it. Um, so this could be an area that you take on. I have to say that my very first job that I did uh, 16 years ago, I opened up her cabinet and I never seen so much Tupperware in my whole life. And it was she was like, I just keep pushing it in there. And I didn't realize until you pulled it all out, all out how much I have. So it was a fun little sorting project. Um, paper. So paper is, we are inundated with paper every single day. Um, and it's one of those things that if we don't kind of nip it in the butt daily, or at least every other day, it gets out of control pretty quickly. So I encourage you, if you decide to do none, none of the other areas of your home, Definitely take on either your filing cabinet or your piles. Um, I walked into a home a couple of years ago and he had 22 filing cabinets. Um, and that was a little shocking to me. I hadn't seen that many in one location. Um, and he gifted himself for his birthday. He wanted to move on in the, in the next year. He goes, I gifted myself the shredding company. I knew it was gonna take a lot of time and effort and I needed them to come out. And I made dates with them every other month. So then that was my goal to make sure that I had a lot of boxes for them to shred. 
So you could go about it doing it that way. If anyone has heard of a shred fest, um, meaning shred document shredding. So at the end of our slides and part of the handout that you'll be receiving is some upcoming shredding events or shred fests as they call them in DuPage County. And it's pretty easy to find, but I highly encourage you to take advantage of a shred fest. Um, it is one of those things, super simple. You put, you know, three, it's usually about three to five, three to five, three is a more common number, boxes or bags of items. You drive to the location, they take it out of your car. There's a big shredding truck there. They dump it into this huge bin and it goes into the shredding truck and you drive away. Like it's that simple. Um, so I encourage you to take advantage of one of those. There's actually one coming up this weekend um, that you'll see on your handout and on this, the, one of the last slides. So take care of your paperwork. Um, it's definitely a gift to yourself to take care of your paperwork. So the next area that we talk about is reusing things. So when you decide that, you know what, I'm gonna part with some things, you know, whether it's like a little three drawer dresser, you'll see that at the bottom left corner, they converted it to a little shoe caddy and a, a little pull out drawer for hats and gloves and, and a bench. So when you decide to donate things or um, give them to other people, a lot of people are reusing things or repurposing things. So ties are really common. I've seen ottomans made out of ties. I've seen lampshades made out of ties. Um, and the fun one I always like, um, I've seen this is an old briefcase that's now converted to a small medicine cabinet, which I thought was really exciting as well. Um, so again, when you decide to donate things, there's people out there that stop at Goodwill or Savers or other like Salvation Army that are looking for your treasures um, that might, might not be great, but they're going to be repurposing those. So think about that too, when you start to um, get rid of some things. Recycling. So I don't know about any of you, but I have to admit that I have a couple of items in the basement that I live in King County, that my King County recycling event is coming up um, next month. And um, I know that I need to take care of them. They're sitting there collecting dust. It's a DVD player and it's a um, old computer. So it's one of those things that again, when I go downstairs, I'm like, oh, I gotta take care of that. I know my date is coming, but I just need to put it in my calendar and take care of it. So recycling is really important. We talk about it on every presentation I give because um, it has to be taken care of in a certain way. You can't put it on the curb normally. Um, there are some towns that have um, a partnership with the garbage company. I don't get into very specific towns since we would be here all night, but DuPage County Recycling Events page is amazing. They have a lot of different um, you know, dates on there and it gives a big description. So I encourage you that if you have, whether it's a computer, printer, cell phone, um, DVD player, TV, um, please take the time to recycle that. Uh, as you all know, I'm sure that TVs cost money to recycle now. Um, there is a place on Fabian Parkway that also takes TVs um, on a Monday through Friday basis. Um, but that could be something that you decide as your homework. Yep, I'm going to find those dates and I'm going to take care of that. I hope it's not a trend going forward um, that things start to cost money to recycle. But as of right now, it's just um, TVs and paint. Um, but again, that's all in the description when you go to the DuPage um, Recycling Events.org page. Um, what is under your sink? So we talk about chemicals because every home that I've been in, people that we sort with and move, um, we all have too many chemicals. We've used a little, we didn't finish it up, now we bought a new one. Um, so I encourage you to look under your sink and see what's there. Uh, I think you'd be amazed if you pull it all out and like, oh my gosh, look at all this stuff. Or what I really prefer to do is like gather it under your kitchen sink in an area and go in the bathrooms, get those items, the laundry room, get those items. And then when you actually see how many chemicals are all in one area, you're like really blown away by it. So as you might know, um, the Naperville um, Hazard Waste Recycling Center, first of all, it's amazing. I've, I've used it myself several times and I um, encourage all of you to use it. They're open on Saturdays and Sundays. Um, you put it in your car, drive down there, 
Um, they take it out of your car, they give you a receipt, you drive away. Like it's that simple. So maybe this is an area that you decide, yeah, every time I try to look for something under my sink, I can't find it. And that again, causes stress and anxiety and it's like, oh, frustrating. So I encourage you to take a look at what's under your sink or in the basement or in the garage, all those different areas that we might have extra chemicals. Okay, so next we're gonna talk about junk drawers because every person that I have worked with has at least one junk drawer. I will admit I have two um, and they get out of hand um, more than I'd like to say. Um, but it's again, making a commitment to say, I'm gonna clean out that drawer today. And most of the junk drawers, like especially if they're in your kitchen, you can actually take the whole drawer out, put it on the counter, you know, sit down next to it, make quick decisions about what's in there. Um, but also like bathroom drawers can get out of control as well, um, where you just kind of keep putting some stuff in there. And all of a sudden it's, oh gosh, I didn't realize how messy that is. So when you go through bathrooms, I like to mention, um, you know, where can we take items? So if, if they're still good and no longer um, that you're not using them and they're a new product, think about taking some toiletries or even over-the-counter medicine that um, you might have two boxes of Allegra and you're like, I'm never going to use that before it expires. Think about taking that to a food pantry. Um, I volunteer at a food pantry um, every week and it's one of those things that we don't have a lot of it, you know, like deodorant. We all get toothpaste from the dentist and it seems like, oh my gosh, we have an abundance of toothpaste now or toothbrushes, you know, things like that. So again, just take a look at what's there in your drawers, taking up space so you can really, you know, make decisions. And then when you open that drawer the next time, you're like, oh, look at this. It looks so neat and organized. And it, and it definitely will bring you some sort of joy, even though you won't tell yourself it brings joy, but it's just like that mood changing when you open it up instead of starting to dig through things. So if you decide to take on a drawer, yay, that's great. Okay, so we, and the reason that we talk about drawers um, is that you can tell like the difference, right? Like look at this picture and it's like, oh yeah, these look really great. That one's so neat and organized. Um, so, and this will cause less stress in your life. Little, what we call um, bins or little cubbies of any kind, even though like the one on the bottom left is for silverware, but you can see just by having an extra wooden, you know, you can buy that at Walmart or um, the container store where it keeps everything neat and organized in that drawer. So when you pull that open and you can find, you know, uh, the batteries really quickly, oh, good, move on with your day onto the next thing. So drawers, there's drawers everywhere in your home, kitchen, bathroom, dresser drawers. You know, I have a little cubby thing like this in my top dresser drawer. Um, again, I open it up, it makes me feel good. Okay, why can't we stay organized? Why, why is this such a hard process, right? So every day it's like, oh yeah, I should go through that and I should take care of this. So a couple of different things is, of course we all have too much stuff. You know, we're all willing to admit that, but why do we have too much stuff? So one thing I like to just point out is that, so when you decide to go to the store, like, oh, I need to go grocery stop shopping this week. And maybe your store of choice is the super Target or the super Walmart. Well, it's just not grocery shopping anymore. It's, oh, I can buy clothes and socks and underwear and, oh, I need a gift and there's candles there and, oh yeah, I need new wiper blades. And all of a sudden it's like, we have so much extra stuff in our cart, even though we came to go grocery shopping. So that could be one of the reasons. Um, and then why can't we stay organized? Because we don't make the time to organize because it's a daunting task. Um, but if we just carved out a little bit of time each week, I think at the end of the month, you would really feel good about the space that you have. And we forget what it feels like to be organized. It, I'm willing to admit it too. Um, when my closet gets out of control or certain areas of the house, it's like, oh boy, we had a lot of hands in this area. It's time to tidy it up. So again, just like you decide to maybe work out every day or a few days a week, you're carving out time for that, or you carve out time, you know, to get your oil changed, or you carve out time to go to lunch with your friends. And it's just the same thing, just carve out a little time, maybe an hour a week or a couple hours a week to really tidy up your areas. So how do these spaces make you feel? So I was, I was um, going through some of, um, and I will tell you that the bottom left corner is actually my bedroom with all of my clothes. 
Um, I like to let you all know that I'm human just like you. And just because I talk about this doesn't mean everything is perfect. Um, but these areas that we have helped people, you know, organize it and declutter and de-stress their lives, um, you know, is, it, it makes an impact in their life. But the reason that I put my own clothes in there, some of you might have heard of the Marie Kondo method of decluttering or downsizing. Um, and so I took on that method a couple of years ago when I heard about it. Um, and I put all of my hanging clothes, I didn't um, dump my folded clothes on my bed because I ran out of space. Um, but this might be a method that you like or you want to try. And she has um, several videos on YouTube, so you can absolutely look at that. But for me personally, it wasn't a great system. Um, I felt very overwhelmed with everything out of my closet onto my bed. Um, but it might be something that you decide to do. But make sure when you do this method and you put everything on your bed that you have enough time to get it off of your bed so you can go back to sleep that night. So maybe that's an area that you want to take on and um, declutter. So and this is just, you know, another option like this is the how your space could be, you know, clean surfaces, um, the garage tidied up and, you know, maybe you maybe you want to take it a step further and have a closet space that is very organized, right? Where it has everything truly has a space. Um, that is something that um, we have seen with our clients and help them um, make that happen. Um, but before that looks like that, you still have to go through everything. Um, and for me, I always like a clean space when I work. So that could be something that you take on is just your office space as well. Um, but these are some areas that you might decide. And, you know, remember too, that the bigger the space, the more time it's going to take. So as we talked through these areas, I didn't say like take on the garage today. And I didn't say take on the whole kitchen today. So you'll hear me say that several times. It's little pieces of the puzzle. It's a couple of drawers in the morning in the kitchen, maybe a drawer after dinner, um, or a pile in the office. So again, little pieces, and you'll see the light as at the end of the tunnel as you do these little pieces of the puzzle. So then it makes you want to continue to get the whole entire room done. So this is a handout that you're going to be receiving um, in your packet. It's 40 bags in 40 days. We just ended Lent, so I still wanted to use it. Um, but this is, a again, little, little pieces of the puzzle um, that you can absolutely take on. If you're like me, I like a checklist, so this is something definitely up my alley. Um, but you might decide on day nine, and again, if you skip a day, it's not a big deal, but again, you're still going through the process. You take on your nightstands. I'll be honest, I don't know the last time that I took on my nightstands, um, but that is something definitely we want to take care of. Um, or day 35, going through your car. Uh, that is something I should absolutely do. I use my car a lot for my home office as well. Um, but that could be an area, again, it is a part of your life that you use probably on a daily basis that might need tidying up because when you get in it, you can't find, you know, your chapstick because there's so much extra junk in there. So again, that might be bringing you some stress. And if you took about an hour out of your day, um, just to go through what's in there, not necessarily, I didn't say detail it, I said just go through what's in there. Um, that could be definitely something that you take on. So this is a checklist that's really simple and easy to use. I'm all about easy and giving out people lots of um, different things to make their lives easier. Um, so simple solutions to take your stress, stress away. Maybe you decide that after you go through the kitchen um, and different and bathrooms, like these are kitchen and bathroom areas. We just actually finished this project with a client last Friday um, that they were like, I don't, I can't see what I have. It's all tucked in there. And so we were able to put in um, some pullout solutions in the kitchen. By the way, if you don't have those, they're not a ton of money um, and they, you will love them after they're there. Um, you can pull it right out, see what's there, know where things are at. Um, it makes, makes life a heck of a lot less stressed. Um, and bathrooms too, where these really great, um, the picture on the bottom right, it's a two-tiered shelf. You might have seen them before. Again, pulls out, it's a basket, you know, things like that. So um, makes 
makes it life a lot easier. So the, the, the I almost said closet. This is the garage that we helped a client um, move. And this was a project that we did in about four hours. So that means that we installed shelving because you can imagine that all of the stuff that you see in the right picture was going to be in the garage and it's like all over the floor, right? And then he couldn't get two cars in there. So at the end of the day, there was a few things in the front there by the lawnmower and there's a box there that he had to go through, but he was able to get two cars in there in a matter of four to five hours just by putting up shelving, getting everything on the shelving and making it look a lot neater um, and more organized so he can find his holiday and different things when he's ready to do that. Um, so what piece of the puzzle are you going to tackle? So you might decide to tackle your china cabinet or your cadenza or your TV cabinet. So again, pieces of the puzzle that we want you just to kind of take a look at and make some decisions about that. So when it's time to move on, um, we can, we'll talk about that or when it's time that you need help getting organized that you're just like struggling with the organization process and you kind of feel frozen, like, I know I need to do this, but I need a jump start. That's when you call and say, I need help from a move manager that can help me through this process. Um, maybe some of you are thinking about moving. We're not gonna talk about the real estate market and how hot it is. Um, lots of things are selling, but maybe it's time that you just need some help with that. So again, whether you recruit um, someone that you know and you love or you need to recruit someone else. You know, I always say when the process is done at the end of the day, like you're going to feel great about it. So please take some time to go through some things. Um, we help you with your plan of action. So it might be, yes, you're deciding to move and we can help you with that plan. Or you might just call me next week and say, Tammy, I need a resource. I'd like to sell a few art pieces. Where should I do that? Um, we are a wealth of information and resources. I encourage you to reach out to us um, and say, how, how do I do this? Or maybe I want to have an estate sale, which we'll talk about in a, in a minute. But I want you to know that there is a lot of resources out there. Um, we're going to talk about scarce in a minute. We also do um, floor plans. So when you decide, um, we have done for those people that are moving and then also those that live in their home still and say, I wanna rearrange everything without physically doing it. Can you help me do that um, in a sense on a floor plan? So that's something else we help people with. But you might decide that you have an excess of things and they're really great things. And you'd like to have some type of sale. So it could be to, a, you wanna have an estate sale in your home it could be, I need a consignment shop to, to that so that store can sell the things that you've sorted through and decluttered. Um, or you could say, I just want to get rid of stuff. Like how, who's going to come and make it all disappear? So all of those different resources, as you know, are out there in the world. If you need help finding them or which ones have I worked with in the past, we're happy to help you and talk you through that process. Um, estate sales are one of those things we touch briefly on um, because when you, whether you're moving from house to house eventually or you're downsizing from your current home to something smaller or you're moving out of state, um, this can be a, a, an estate sale is a really great process if it can fit in your timeline. But again, it's like making decisions on what you want to keep, going through what you have. So you can really like see the light at the end of the tunnel. And when you, whether you're moving or you're just trying to declutter, it's like ah, there's some solutions and I can see how this is all going to play out for me. Um, we do offer packing if that's something that you might be interested in um, when the moving process starts. Or it can also be when you're selling your home and you need to have it staged, we can come in and pack up those things ahead of time that aren't used on a daily or weekly basis. So then your house is ready to list as well. And then we also do all of the unpacking when you decide to move to a different location, whether it's a condo living or whether it's home to home living, um, we can have that all done for you. And I think it's important to understand that 
when someone helps you, whether it's the mover or a manager, move manager like ourselves, um, that it's important to put things away. You know, it's one thing to when when we moved 14 years ago, our neighbors came over to meet us over that next weekend when we were here. And they're like, how do you have two cars in your, in your garage? Why are they not in the driveway? They understood what I did for a living. And I think it makes you um, be able to enjoy that new space quicker. So I think that's really important, whether you're just decluttering your space or you're deciding to move or you're deciding to um, you know, just take care of some things like that space that you're going to be creating in the end, it will bring you joy, it will bring you happiness, it will want to invite your friends over to that new space because it's clean and fresh and all of those things. So I know this is a daunting task to go through things and look through paperwork and junk drawers and kitchen cabinets and all these different areas, but you will definitely feel great in the end. Um, so this is, you know, another person that we helped. We helped her to pick out her favorite things um, and recreate her space. And it absolutely brought her joy to have bright colors on the walls. That's not for everybody, um, but that's definitely something that, um, you know, people will like to, to do as well. So if you have a basement that, or an attic, we have worked in attics as well, that looks like this, right? So there's a, there's a lot of stuff in this space. Um, I was in a house um, actually last week that this looked pretty good. Um, and I want you to all know that this is very doable. And you might say, Tammy, that is a crazy statement that you just said. Um, but the reason that we say that it's doable is that again, you're breaking it down to one piece of the puzzle. Right, so each box is one, one piece of the puzzle. Um, I will say that you might have items in your basement that don't belong to you. Um, sister, brother, kids, whoever it is. Again, that's a piece of your puzzle that you need to have them take care of it. Like it's time for them to get their items out or at least come over and go through them and make some decisions about what's there. Um, you're not a storage facility, and that's really what a basement is, myself included. I have a basement, lots of stuff in it, um, that we just need to go through it and make some decisions on what's there. I do this for myself for every holiday that I have. So at my Easter things that I was just putting away, I had three items for Goodwill. Yes, it's only three. I only have one bin for Easter, but again, I'm not taking those back into the basement. I'm making decisions. Um, I love them long enough. We say that often in our field um, and we're passing them on to someone else, whether it's Goodwill or a different charity that you're gonna have come and get some things. So this could be uh, when you look at it like, oh, this is so stressful. I don't even wanna go down there. But again, it's doable. It's one box at a time. Um, so we like to put a positive spin on clutter. I know it's so stressful and, and going through things. So clutter is just not the stuff on your floor. It's anything that stands between you and the life that you want to be living. So if we have a lot of clutter around us and it's causing us a lot of stress and anxiety and frustration, you know, it can be just a, a just a, a, um, a few hours a week. And by the end of that, that week or that month, you're feeling better about your space. So when you walk into there or when other people come over, you feel really good about it. And sometimes downsizing your home is a great idea so that you have more time to do the things that bring peace into your life. I love the outdoors. So anytime I can get outside, I do that. When I come back inside and I haven't taken care of things, you know, it causes me stress. So if I would just tidy those up before I walk out the door, um, that would definitely bring me more um, joy and peace into my life. Um, and Ann Lander says, this is always my favorite, the best things in life aren't your things at all. Um, so we hold on to a lot of stuff in our life. Um, I was just saying this to a client today and, and her daughter, um, you know, you are not your stuff. It's not defined. You're not defined by your stuff. So when you decide to give things away or donate things or sell things on, you know, the local resale shop or, or different areas, like you've loved it. You've loved it long enough and it's time to pass it on. Um, so this is an, some upcoming recycling events in the DuPage County area. 
Um, and so this is a part of your handout, but you can absolutely go to dupagecounty.org. Um, right on their homepage, you'll find the events, and events page on the left-hand side. I encourage you to go there um, and look through the events that are coming up. I didn't put them all on here. My slides would go on and on forever. There's quite a few of them. I do have to say that if you guys all live in the DuPage County area, um, they have great resources, like really great resources where other counties, it's really hard to find resources. So DuPage does a really great job of um, having recycle or uh, different events, um, recycling events for you. The other um, website that I would like all of you to go to, um, it's something that I have found years ago in my industry, um, is scarce.org. For those of that you have used them, wonderful. Um, it's a great organization. They also have an events page. It's actually calendar form. So I encourage you to go there. They also have the different um, recycling events that's coming up in the DuPage County area but they also take a lot of things um, and they find homes for those, um, those items, whether it's crafts that you're donating to them or books, um, but they are a really great resource as well. So I encourage you to go to their website and kind of take a look at it. Um, so a couple of things just to kind of round it out here and then we're gonna take some questions is, you know, this is a, a doable process. Um, we talk about it, I talk about it all the time. Um, but it's if you have you know a person that lives with you, whether it's your spouse or your kids, um, or you have friends that come over, you know you can also do this like as a challenge too. So and I know that sounds kind of crazy about a challenge for um, sorting through things and decluttering to to create less stress in your life, but it is like that where you can challenge you know your neighbor or your best friend like hey I'm gonna go through my spice cabinet today. Why don't you go through your spice cabinet today? And we're going to chuckle about things that we find in our spice cabinet, you know, or you can just compare notes about it or, hey, to, just to have an accountability partner to say to your husband, like, hey, I'm going to go through my drunk, our drunk drawer today. Why don't you go through this other drunk drawer out in the garage? You know, so again, like you're getting both of you involved or like I did with my daughter um, and my son, I said, you know, I'll give you a new closet system if you go through your closet and he's 17 and wanted to install it himself. And that absolutely motivated him. So he has a whole new closet system in his um, bedroom to um, you know, have a little more organization in his closet when he opens the door. After he was all done, it was really funny. Being 17, he comes down and he's like, mom, I'm all done. I said, well, how does it look? He goes, it actually feels great. And I'm like, oh, well, it must look good too. And he's like, it does. So again, like little tidbits of information, you know, you can all go to, you know, container store or any of these stores that have a lot of organization um, tools for you, whether it's pullouts in the cabinets or little cubbies for drawers. But the thing is, is we all have to make a decision that we're actually going to take the time to downsize in our areas that just need a little more assistance or as we call it, our attention. So I am happy to take um, questions that we might have come up um, with different um, topics that we write off. You might have a really great resource that you want to share with us. That would be wonderful too. I don't have all of the answers all of the time. Um, so we'll go ahead and start the question and answers at this time. Okay, thank you so much, Tammy. That was really great. And we of course do have a couple of questions and I'll, I'll try to organize them. Um, someone is asking, how do you let go of items from your past? Maybe perhaps things that you made when you were young or things that your parents made? Um, because, you know, a person can feel really bad about, you know, you know, whether whether to hang on to them or to let them go. Yeah, so that's a great question. Thanks for bringing that up. Um, and actually, I was talking about with a client today where she's lived in her home for 50 years and She's like, I love everything I have. Um, and I pulled out a couple of things and she told me how much she paid for them and where she bought them. Um, but memorabilia that has come from your family is hard. Um, so a couple of different areas that we talk about. So first of all, photographs. So we all, we all have a ton of photographs. I encourage you to do spend the time and money on photo organizing. 
Um, it, yes, <clears throat> it, it costs a little bit of money, but you will feel really great in the end. And then also with photo organizing, you can also like give that to your family, right? So yes, you're the keeper of all the pictures, but then you can have them um, you know, on a zip drive or jump drive and be able to share those with other people. And you also have to say to yourself with, you know, like if you're the keeper of all the family heirlooms, like you can only keep them for so long, um, but to keep the right ones, right? Where it's like, well, these are the boxes from the family, but you haven't been through them in 25 years and you really don't even know what's in them. Where, you know, my grandma was she took pictures of everything under the sun. So when I went through those, when she went to heaven, you know, I went, I'm like, I don't need pictures of giraffes and I don't need pictures of landscapes, right? So I was able to really condense it down to, to a, a small amount for the family. And so memorabilia. So let's talk a little bit about that. Just like I do with my own children that are 12 and 17, you know, you can't keep it all, right? But you can keep things that are the most important to you or bring back a lot of memories to you. Um, I do take pictures of the items that I don't keep. Um, so then at least I have that if I wanna refer back to it and show her, remember when you made me this? I didn't keep it, but we still have it. Um, but it is important also, um, my mother-in-law did this with me about 10 years ago. Um, so she took pictures of things that were just in her house. And I thought, what is she doing? Why is she doing this? So she comes over with a stack of pictures and a spreadsheet. And so she goes, I went and took pictures of everything that I have in the house, meaning like tchotchkes and certain chairs that might have a meaning to somebody. And I said, well, what do you mean? And she goes like, for example, the first picture was these rock glasses. And I was like, what? I, what do you want me to do? And she goes, I want to know if you want them. Okay, well, I don't want them, but thank you. And so we had 400 pictures to look at. But the reason that I tell you this story is that through looking those pictures, and I'm the daughter-in-law, and I'm the only one, that I learned more about my family that I married into than I ever did before. Those were the rock glasses that sat on grandpa's credenza. Um, he was a judge in King County, and he served Canadian whiskey out of those glasses. And my husband looks at the picture, he goes, I want those. And I thought, well, we don't drink like that. Why do we want those rock glasses? And he goes, because I remember those at home when I went over to grandpa's house and I was allowed on special occasions to drink milk out of them. And it brought back a memory for my husband. So the reason that I tell you that story is that me, a daughter-in-law or anyone else in the family, doesn't understand or know what you have in your house, that it should be passed on from person to person through generations. So I can't take the emotion out of it. Um, I wish I could, but make some decisions about it, or at least tell your family some stories. So she, she asked to come to my house to go through the pictures, and she goes, we'll need to have lunch. I'm bringing lunch. What do you want? And I'm like, okay, great. And so we had four hours of going through pictures that if I didn't take the time to understand, and now when I go over to her home and see those items, I know the story. She wasn't ready to part with everything, but she took that list and those pictures to each of her children, and they helped her make decisions. And when she just, you know, God decides to take her to heaven, that it's pretty simple and straightforward because now we each have a box of things at her house that are for us. Now, some of those things for Christmas, I received that I really liked. And so my husband got the rock glasses for Christmas, but it was perfect because he wanted them. So that's just a little bit of the emotional collections, treasures that we have. And I could go on and on about those, but Again, you can reach out to me if we need a little more details about that. No, that that's that's great and a great story about about your mother-in-law and how she handled it. Related to that is, uh, what do we do about about gifts? It's hard when someone has given something to us. Yes, absolutely. So um, that that can be hard. Um, so the thing that we talk about with gifts and my my mom did this with us she had a client that would give her very nice things and i said it's time to start making decisions on those because you have so many of them and the thing is is that she did 
right? So again, she said time aside to make decisions on what I'm doing with those gifts. So some of those she's saving for her grandchildren and others she's like, you know, I loved it. I displayed it for 25 years and it's time just to pass it on um, to someone else that's going to love it and display it for that long as well. Um, depending on what kind of gift it is kind of depends on my answer. Um, but you can also, you know, if you don't see that person any longer either, then that's okay to gift it to someone else or donate it to, to another charity. But if it's a big item, that's kind of makes it a little bit more difficult. Um, but I think it's, if that person visits you and you're ready to part with that item, I think it's a quick conversation, you know, just to be upfront and honest with that person. Like, I love this curio cabinet, but I, I just don't use it anymore. And the things that are in it, you know, I, I'm going to part with a lot of them and I, I might not need them, but I found a really good home for it to go to, but I wanted just to let you know, um, again, just to make some decisions about that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, someone mentions um, that children often also add another dimension. Um, you know, children can have trouble emotionally getting rid of things um, from earlier in their childhood. Um, and then, of course, there's also all of their art projects um, that can be hard for, for parents and grandparents to get rid of. Any suggestions for, for those types of things, both for the kids and for all that precious artwork? Yeah, absolutely. So I'll start with the kids part first. Um, so like I did with my own daughter, um, I actually found um, some girls that are a little bit younger than her. And I said, let's give them some things. And she's like, well, what do you mean? And I said, so they might not have, you know, a volleyball and a volleyball net, which we're done with that part of our life. Or they might not have the Barbie, you know, little furniture that you're done with. And so I found a family, again, two little girls younger than me or, or my daughter, and we started gifting them some things. And so the greatest joy for a mom, I have to say, or a parent of any kind, when I show her the picture of the clothes that they're wearing and the toys that they're playing with. And she's like, oh, that's my stuff. And I'm like, right, and you are no longer playing with it anymore or wearing it, and now look how much they're enjoying it. And then, of course, she reads, like, the messages that the mom sends to me, and it really, make, my daughter is a giving person, and it really has, like, blossomed her to want to give and give and give and give. And I'm like, well, that still fits you. Can we hold on to it for another couple of months? You know, um, but it, that has made her a giving person. But it was important that I helped her understand the process. Like, we're going to go through this stuff. We found this family that is in need of things. We have the perfect things for that family. And then showing her the outcome of that. So that really um, helped with the process as well. And so the other part of the question. Was the artwork, kids' artwork. <laughs> I was like, oh, I forgot about it. Um, so it, artwork is hard. I will tell you, I have an artist. She's the artist. And Mitchell is... The, he's the older one. And so he creates things like bigger things. Um, so with the artwork with my daughter, um, I would of course pick and choose. And what I would do is I would have all of first grade in a folder for the whole year. I would save it, save it, save it, save it, save it, save it. And then at the end of the school year, I brought it out right in front of her. And I said, pick out your favorites. And she goes, oh, these are all mine. You saved them. I said, I did but we're not saving them forever. We can't save them all, right? Else I'd have a lot of piles in my house. I said, which ones were your favorites? And so I said, you're allowed to pick, I would pick a number like 10. I said, let's pick 10. And so then that's how I created my kids' like little folders for each year of their life. And then as they are getting older, like my son is graduating high school, um, I'm able now for hopefully I'll have a graduation party, um, is to pull out, again, some favorites out of there. Not all of them, but a few favorite things that, that he did that I want to have on display for the party. Um, but it is, again, making time to make a commitment. But I think it's important to involve them. You know, when they're in preschool, they're kind of young for that. But as they get older through the years, um, that's personally what I like to do. Great, great. Thank you. Okay, uh, another question. What suggestions do you have for reducing paperwork at home? Uh, and then of course, everybody now has a home office. 
Yes. Um, I think it has to be a system. So, you know, like you have to come up with a system for yourself. And let me tell you that I can tell you six or 10 different system and none of them might work for you. Um, my system doesn't work for my husband. He's like, I don't understand like this and this and this. And I'm like, well, this is for this. And I'm using this on, you know, so I go through my system with them and that's not his system. Same thing with my own kids um, where they have come up with their own system. So you can absolutely Google it for sure. But I think it's just trial and error where what I, what I try to do on every Sunday, just to make sure that I, when I start on Monday morning, like it's a, like I have a clean space, right. That I've taken care of the things that I need to take care of those piles on my desk and whatnot. Um, but you, it is, I will tell you how many, probably six or eight different systems that I have tried. Um, but what it comes down to is two things, no devices in that time that you're going through things. So I don't look at my computer. I don't look at my phone or any other devices that are around. And it's like, I have 20 minutes to get this done and you will be more productive in that 20 minutes if nothing distracts you to go through it and, and have a system. Um, but I will say that we don't keep a lot of paper in my house. Um, you know, the things that we have to keep, of course we do. But again, we, we go through it. I get the mail, my husband gets the mail. We use the Ohio method just to get our mail. Like, where does it go? Put it there. Instead of, you know, putting it on the counter and then picking it up from the counter and setting it over there. And, oh, I have to go through that. No, just come in the house and take care of wherever it needs to go. Okay, great, thank you. And kind of related to that, uh, how long should we keep tax returns and what about bill payment receipts? So yeah, those good paper. Yeah, um, again, you know, we're inundated with paper. So taxes are standard seven years, right? So that is kind of the rule of thumb across the board. Now, with my accountant, and I'll refer back to your own personal accountant, if you have one, your tax accountant, or you can also ask your financial advisor, um, she's like three years. It's three years across the board because they can't come back and audit you, you know, before three years. Um, I was a little nervous about that at first, I'll be honest with you, when she told me that. Um, so I kept seven years for a number of years, um, but then we went down to five years and now we're down to three years. Um, but if you have um, paperwork, taxes, like the, the gal told me today, she's like, I have my taxes from 1969, the day I got married. Okay, we don't need those. Um, they're not, you're never going to need those um, back from that year. Again, it's seven years, um, but commit to yourself and to, you know, your loved ones that you're going to take care of that. And that's really important, whether it's a shredding company coming to your home, great solution, by the way, not as expensive as you think, um, or if you're going to take it to a shred fest as well. But again, making a commitment. When I first started in this industry, I will tell you that my parents had 40 years of taxes because they were audited one time. Um, they had my, both my parents have their own businesses. And um, so from that moment on, my mom wasn't gonna throw anything away. But when I said to her, I said, it's time to go through the taxes um, because it, it, it was just taking up this whole room of, of, of space. And now she created a little library in that space and it brings her so much joy instead of looking at tax records. Right, right. So between three and seven years on, on the tax returns and um, the bill payment receipts. So bill payment receipts. So we're getting into a lot of technology where we can find, you know, a lot of things that we have bought or um, paid for. Um, and, and you might not have that. So for ourselves, like you can go to ComEd and go to their website and say if you need you know, what you paid for each month, and they'll give you a printout where you don't need to keep that little receipt, you know, tearing it off, mailing it. Um, so, so I don't feel that you need to keep a lot of those. It's always different, you know, if you're writing off a home office, you know, like that we're all kind of doing right now. So again, go ask your, your tax and consultant about that or your financial advisor, they can also answer some of those questions. But um, we use that printout. You know, it's one sheet of paper. It's not one piece of paper for every month. 
Um, and the same thing like with the, you know, cell phone bill, the, the water, the, you know, all of those different bills. Um, that's the great thing about technology. It's like, just print that off. It's super simple. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there were a couple of questions um, as we're wrapping up about very specific things. Um, someone asked about first day stamp covers. Um, I think that's a collector's item kind of. It is a collector's item. And it's so funny that you mentioned that because I just referred um, a company um, out of LaGrange, LaGrange Stamp and Coin um, to a gentleman that has um, probably a 10 by 10 room filled with stamps from floor to ceiling. Um, so stamps have value to them. Um, it all depends on the year and the color and, and are they used, are they not used, all those different things. So I would, um, you, they can reach out to me for that resource or I would absolutely, I um, didn't, haven't worked with them in the past, but I worked with them with this particular gentleman and they were wonderful to work with. But whether it's coins, stamps, baseball cards, that's kind of all in the same collection um, of resources so that they were a really great resource for us. Okay, thank you. But don't throw them out, check on them first. <laughs> no, absolutely, they might be valuable. Uh, someone else has 22 used syringes and they can't find anyone to, to take care of disposing of them. Any ideas for that? Fire departments. So check with their local fire department. Um, to see if they take them, a lot of fire departments do. And if that doesn't work, um, most Walgreens now is taking medication that is expired. They have a box for that. And like for me, it's my local police department, but I had um, a gentleman, or actually it was Ruth, that she had inhalers, a lot of them not used. Um, I didn't know what to do with those because what category do those fit into? So again, I just called the police department to say, hey, will you take these? And they're like, oh, that's a fire department thing. Okay, great. I called them, dropped them off. But syringes, um, I'm 90% I'm sure that the fire department will take those. Um, if they, you might have to package them in a certain way in order for them to receive them. Right, and actually a member of the community uh, has typed in um, that the recycling event this weekend in Wheaton says that it, they will take sharps. So I'm assuming that that means they'll take syringes. So great, um, thank you to our community. That um, is awesome. <laughs> uh, someone is asking um, if you could repeat what to do with chemicals, like if we find all those extra things on, under the sink. Yes, absolutely. So it's Naperville Hazardous Chemical Recycling. And if you Google, um, Naperville Recycling, it will pop up um, just one of the, the Google searches, or you can go to Naperviller-recycling.org, and that is where I take my chemicals. It's the easiest, safest, you know, way to do that. Um, it's on. They are only open on the weekends, so that doesn't necessarily work for everybody. Um, but you put them into a box. Um, you know, it's it's. There is certain ones that they don't take, the really rare, the ones that they don't take. I've never seen them in my industry, but it's like hazardous household chemicals. Um, so you just put them into a box, you pop open your trunk, and then they come out and get them. Great. They do prefer them in a box. Oh, okay, good to know. All right, well, and then um, the last question is just about um, providing your email again, and actually um, that sort of uh, allows me to wind things up because uh, if you, uh, as you registered for this event, uh, we are going to be sending out a number of resources, um, a packet that uh, Tammy mentioned during the presentation with that checklist and, and all kinds of resources on that, and it will, of course, that email will include uh, the the website uh, for Tammy's business, as well as the email address. And so we'll be sending that out to everyone who's registered. If you are listening to the recording of this program and would like those resources, please feel free to email me at ce at wheatonlibrary.org. That's ce like community engagement at wheatonlibrary.org. And I would be happy to send those resources out to you. Uh, so with that, uh, thank you so much, Tammy. This was great information. Um, thanks for taking the time to also answer our questions. Uh, and again, we'll be sending out all of those resources along with uh, this recording has been, re this program has been recorded and it will be up on our YouTube page in about a week. So thank you so much to everyone and uh, good night and take care everybody. And we hope to see you again soon.